nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. When my heart becomes clean, every shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I
Good morning. <laughs> it is wonderful to be with you on this brisk fall day. I love it too. My hands are chilly. Anybody else? Well, get ready. We're going to warm up the spirit in this place and worship and praise our God. Welcome to worship here at Clinton United Methodist Church. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Jeff, Reverend Jessica Bradler nalty I'll do it nice and slow so I actually say it right. Um, it is an honor and privilege to serve here as a senior pastor and uh, just to be in worship with you or to be worshiping, you, worshiping with you online. Getting warmed up as we go, right? <laughs> as we join together in worship, we're gonna take a moment and greet one another first in the peace and love of Christ. So let us rise and greet our neighbors. Good morning. Lord, we come to you this day with so many things laying claim to our lives, our hearts, and our spirits. Open our ears and our hearts to hear your words of healing love. Help us to pray as you taught us. Our loving God in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God can and will rescue us. Place your trust in God's love. Our hope is in the Lord, who is our refuge and our strength. Even though temptations surround us, drawing us away from God, we will continue to follow God and trust in God's ways. Amen. And if I may get a little bit off script, our opening hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, is also known as the Navy Hymn, which is appropriate considering in a few days my shipmates and I, October 13th actually, we will celebrate the 248th birthday of our United States Navy. So I invite you to rise as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, number 2191. <laughs>
That was perfect that that song was selected. It was not on purpose, but it was a Holy Spirit moment. Um, Today, I am the only, um, well, not the only. (laughs) Um, Beth is not here today, and Sandy is not here today. They are both traveling and or visiting with family, and so I'm sharing with us the announcements for today. So, I hope you have all had an opportunity to meet our new Director of Children and Youth Ministries, Medasia Stewart and welcomed her as a part of our church community. And while we're excited for her vision and leadership, we all need to do what we can to support our children and youth ministries and in order to help them grow and thrive. There are various ways that you can help from volunteering as a Sunday school teacher or helper, signing up to provide a Sunday night meal for our hungry youth and more. You can sign up through the links that are provided in the midweek news to either take on a Sunday morning. You don't have to do every Sunday morning for Sunday school. It's actually would be ideal if we could get a rotation so you could sign up for a week that works for you and so then other teachers also then get to worship when they are here. Um, So you could sign up for Sunday school teaching and helping, or you can sign up to provide a meal for our youth group on Sunday nights. As I like to say, teamwork makes the dream work. So let's work together to support our young people and help them know how important they are to us. Next, we have our annual church conference coming up. First, know that all are welcome to join us for this meeting on October, Saturday, October 28th at 9.30 a.m. as we celebrate the mission and ministry of our church, as well as tend to some official church business. Um, All people, whether you are church members or not, are welcome and have voice, but only the members have vote, just FYI. Um, And as we have in the past couple of years, we will be hosting this as a combined church conference event. They're called cluster conferences for about a dozen local churches in the area, all having their conferences here that day. We'll worship together, have some refreshments, and then break for our different meetings in different rooms. So we are going to be lining up some volunteers to help with greeting and hospitality, refreshments, worship leadership, as well as set up and clean up. Contact Sandy in the church office if you are able to help with this important event. Our next North Hunterdon free community dinner will be a takeout only coming up in two weeks on Saturday, October 21st at 4 p.m. You can pick up a meal for yourself or to deliver to someone else who could benefit from a little extra TLC. Contact the main office to reserve your meals this or next week. And also note that in November, we will be gathering for an in-person meal, also with the option for takeout. More details to come on that one. Now, we are three weeks into our faithful and inclusive study, and we have been having wonderful conversations and learning about how to read and interpret the Bible for such a time as this. We only have three weeks left of this short-term study, but we will be offering another short-term study in Advent in those, I believe it's going to be Monday nights in December. We're going to have some sort of craft thing incorporated with it. Hopefully intergenerational. I know my girls are excited to do some crafting, possibly around angels. Mm. (laughs) So if you're looking to join a small group learning experience, you're welcome to join us for that. And in the meantime, there are regularly meeting community groups that meet every various days of the week, various times and places offering opportunities for deep and meaningful connection, support, and spiritual growth. If you are interested in joining such a group, I invite you to reach out to Jill Paleo, yay, um, or contact the church office for more information. And now I'd like to invite Medasia Stewart up to uh, lead our children's time.
Do we have anyone that wants to come up? Last week, we talked a little bit about how sometimes we might get a feeling to do something naughty or something we really shouldn't do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Definitely all about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so this week, we're talking about the things in life that may make us want to sin or do something naughty. Um, do you know what those things are called? Well, you probably might know a little bit. <laughs> but those things, right, <laughs> those things are called temptations. Um, and temptation is something you know you shouldn't do or you may want to do or you may want something, um, but it's just not good for you. And you already know, but it kind of, it tempts you, right? It makes you want it. Um, it can be something like, cookies on top of the fridge that mom said you shouldn't have until after dinner. Um, it makes you really want it. You know you shouldn't have it, but you know, sometimes you make the choice to have it. And that's called a sin. That would be called a sin. Um, and so this week, we just want to think about all of those temptations in our lives. Um, and not just the physical ones, but the things in our minds too, right? That might make us, that might lead us to make not great choices. So let's go throughout the week and think about those things and think about the ways that God wants us to be our best selves um, and make the best choices that we can. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, and um, we can go downstairs for Sunday school now. <laughs>
As we prepare our hearts for um, prayer time today, we're going to be um, reminding us of the, the prayer cards that were in the binders that were passed into the center aisle. We're, yes, they were passed. Excellent. Um, in those prayer, in the binder, you'll find a prayer card. If you have anything that you'd like to share with the congregation to help you pray for those things, it can be a joy, it can be a concern, a celebration. We invite you to use that prayer card and place that in the offering plate later on in the service. We have an email that goes out every Monday, except this week is uh, the office is closed on Monday and Sandy is away, so she'll, she'll be back at some point on Tuesday. So it'll be coming a little bit later on Tuesday, just FYI, it will come. Um, but if you wanted to receive that prayer email, go ahead and drop your contact information, including your email address in the offering plate as well and ask to be included in the prayer list. And now let us join our hearts and spirits together in a time of prayer. Delivering God, you call us to be people of faith, yet we often are people who are led astray by temptations. We're tempted to focus on the weaknesses and faults of others, to judge and exclude those who we label as different. You know the strength of love and the power of prayer. So help us as we pray to be faithful in our relationships and committed to loving our neighbors. We are tempted to believe that peace can never truly be achieved especially when we see how hatred and violence prevails. You know that peace can grow through actions and choices, both big and small. Help us to be faithful peacemakers. We are tempted to believe it is impossible to meet the needs of all, to reach a time when every hungry person is fed. You know that there is enough to share. Help us to be generous and faithful. You specialize in impossibilities. You walked on water. You heal the nations. You forgive sins. You set the captives free. You set us free from our captivities. This morning, we pray for people here who are led astray by the many temptations of the world, who wonder whether you exist and whether you are listening to our prayers. We pray for those who are experiencing brokenness of heart, body, or spirit, and in need of healing. Pour out your healing spirit to bring wholeness and restoration. Be our strength and our rock in times of trial. Give us faith, small as a mustard seed, so that we can be your faithful people, believing in your power to save, to heal, to redeem the brokenness in our lives and world. We ask all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the gospel attributed to St. Matthew, chapter 17, verses 14 through 20. When they came to the crowd, a man came to him, knelt before him, and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic, and he suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. 
And Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of this word. Amen. This morning, we are in the second to last week of our sermon series on the Lord's Prayer, and I hope that you have been enjoying it as much as I have been. The deep meaning of this often repeated prayer has really come to, to life, come alive for me in new ways. We started by noticing that we pray the words our and us many times throughout the prayer, always reminding us that we never pray alone or for ourselves alone, but always within a community of faith. And we'll see that again today. We realized how we're praying that we make God's name holy or hallowed by our living and loving. We talked about our role in being kingdom builders and how we are called to seek God's will before our own. We've reflected on God's provision for our daily needs and that we are called to live in such a way that there is truly enough for all God's children. Last week, we wrestled with forgiveness our calling to forgive others as we have been forgiven, rather than holding grudges or responding with retribution. And this week we turn to almost the last phrase, which is another challenging request. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Temptation is something that we're all familiar with, as Medeja pointed out, no matter how young or old. Little and big things seem to tempt us. Throughout the week, we've been looking for the places in our lives, I've been looking as preparing for a sermon and for worship, I've been looking for places in our lives where we pray, lead us not into temptation. And I'm not just talking about chips or cookies or Doritos. <laughs> Lead us not into temptation. Most certainly is about more serious things too. I know a number of people in recovery who are praying with every breath. Lead me not into temptation. Temptation in itself is not necessarily a bad thing. While it has often been equated with bad behavior, temptation itself is neither good nor bad. It depends on what you do with it. Temptations arise within us when there is a deep need that is not being met in our lives. The need to be loved appreciated, validated, celebrated, the need to slow down and grasp on to more joy in the midst of this crazy, busy life of ours. When we were in the thick of COVID shutdowns and social dist distancing mandates, were you ever tempted to give someone a hug? I know I was. We were tempted because in ordinary times, hugs are good for us. And we missed the connection and comfort they brought. There are plenty less healthy temptations that we struggle with. But each of them comes from a place of need 
within us. Perhaps we experienced pain in our past. Perhaps we're covering over a wound or wrestling with a deep anxiety that longs to be healed. Our needs are worthy of our attention and care. The thing is, when we give in to unhealthy temptations, our actions rarely meet the deep longing of our souls. Seldom do they bring the healing or the abundant life that we truly seek. More often than not, we are tempted by numbing behaviors, distractions that keep us from seeing our reality rather than addressing the places of brokenness in our lives. Perhaps instead we should pray, lead us not into temptation, but help us find true healing. In our scripture today, I picture dueling human needs. On the one hand, there are the needs of the father and son who are in need of healing, restoration, and relationship. On the other hand, there are the needs of the disciples who are needing to prove how, uh, who they are in this new movement, the way, Jesus' movement. Jesus looks at the human needs of the father and the son and he recognizes their temptation to persistently seek help because they needed it. That was a good temptation. And Jesus recognizes this need as one that leads to wholeness. At the same time, Jesus looks at the human needs of the disciples. He recognizes their temptation to give up, see themselves as inadequate, unable to heal followers. And Jesus responds with a powerful reminder that if they had faith only as small as a mustard seed, they could move a mountain. In reading this scripture, maybe you are tempted to judge the father as weak for needing help. I don't think you really would, but maybe you are quick to see the disciples as less than because they could not cure the boy. Again, I don't really think you would because believing ourselves to be healers is tempting to not see that as a possibility. What if instead of judging one another for the temptations we face and succumb to, we had the faith as small as a mustard seed and worked toward meeting our human needs that lead us out of temptation? Remember, we don't pray, lead me not into temptation right? Lead us not into temptation. Even here, there is a communal aspect of wholeness and healing that reaches beyond the individual to encompass community. And don't we want all human needs met and wounds healed? I love the theology of the African word Ubuntu, which means I am because we are. We pray to avoid temptation for all of us because what's healthy for one of us can have positive ripple effects out into the community for all of us. Lead us not into temptation isn't just about one of us making good choices. It's about all of us. Which, lead, which leads us to the second part of this phrase. But deliver us from evil. 
it seems to suggest that evil is something separate from ourselves, something other, or at least something that we can be delivered from. In her book, Wickedness, English philosopher Mary Midgley writes that we need to think of wickedness not primarily as a positive, definite tendency, like aggression, but rather as a negative, as a general kind of failure to live as we are capable of living. Evil, she argues, arises from our failure to manifest our amazing positive capabilities as human beings. Evil is born from a lack of good, the absence of good. Deliverance from evil, then, looks like an embracing of our best selves and the best possibilities that await our communities. Living with an intentionality of doing good rather than missing those opportunities. So lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For our congregation, our community, that could mean a lot of things. Lead us not to be tempted to stay safe in our privilege while others are hurting. Lead us not into temptation to stay silent when we must speak alongside others for justice. Lead us not into temptation of succumbing to apathy or complacency or to white supremacy or to privilege. Lead us not into temptation. Oh, God, because we is more important than me. And Christ is calling us all to embrace our best selves and help others to do that too. When we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Let those words be a commitment to do the good, joyful work of being our best selves, our best neighbors, our best church for the sake of a better world for all. May it be so. Amen. Our song of reflection today is... A favorite, as Dave likes to call them, earworms. Um, Amazing Grace. I invite you to rise as we sing together. Number 378, Amazing Grace.
as we have received grace upon grace from God and have been blessed, we now have an opportunity to share those blessings and graces with others, to work together as a church, to do God's work in and through our community and all across the world. As our ushers come forward for the offering plates, I do invite you to uh, remember the prayer cards or any contact information that you also wanna put in the offering plate and know that online giving is always available for those joining in person or online. Now let us offer our gifts and grace generously and joyfully. Almighty Father, Savior and Redeemer, we are grateful, humbled, in fact, to be able to share back a portion of the gifts that you first provided to us for the promotion of truth, love, unity, and peace. Amen. Uh, please remain standing as you are able as we sing, Lord, I Need You. I need you, oh. 
Temptation comes my way. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stand. Lord, I need you. As we go out into our day, remember that, (laughs) that we all need God. We need the grace, the amazing grace that God pours out. We need the strength and the guidance to lean away from those temptations, to be delivered from them, to choose the right, to choose to be our best selves, who God is creating us to be. So go out into your day with the strength and the love and the amazing grace of God, which surely goes with you. Amen. 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 Teach my soul to rise in you. When temptation comes by